everybody. Hello. Welcome to Almost 30. What's up? Hope you are doing okay. We're almost in October here and we're just chugging along. Chugging along, baby. Yeah. I think in a time of contrast like this, sometimes the the good things really shine. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. Like what? <laughs> um, I've been taking walks every morning and I just feel like I... With the rush of what we were doing before quarantine, all the things, I wasn't really appreciating that like um, time by myself or slowness. And I, I've just really enjoyed my walks. I know you've been walking too. It's just really nice. I like see, I see things that, okay, this morning I took a video of a slug eating a little leaf. I like that. And it made me so happy. But I, how did I I like? I wouldn't have seen that if I was just like, all right, let me get my walk done. Let me catch up on my emails. I was actually off my phone. And then I pulled out my phone to video the slug. That's content (laughs) I like. That should be a reel. God damn. You should make that a reel. Krista's obsessed with making reels right now. Put WAP as the background. (laughs) Yeah. And make a reel. WAP. And it's like wet ass (laughs) slug. (laughs) That's your next reel. That's the kind of reels I want to see. Yeah. I honestly just want to like make reels of my kittens only. Do Exclusive it. Exclusive kitten reels. <laughs> I'm going to have a kitten channel. I love that. I would love that. Reels are killing me. Seeing the reel. Oh my gosh. The reels on my Explorer page. Yes. Dude. At the top, it's always like these teen boys and it's creeping me out. Wait, say more. What, what are they doing? Because they're in this like, like TikTok house. These like boys that are like, I don't know how old they are. And all I do is like make content all day and they're like doing like sexual dances and I'm like so uncomfortable. Like they're dancing to like songs and doing like, I don't even know, but I feel I'm like, oh my gosh. No judgment, but hi, when I'm a parent, you're not living in a TikTok house. I know, that's true. <laughs> I just feel bad. I, I, they're probably, hopefully they're having fun, bless, of whatever. Abundance tall. But I feel like that that would be one of those things where like is a cool idea where you're like hang out with your friends, make TikToks all day in this mansion, it's sick. But then you get there and you're like, this is miserable. People yeah. are partying, people are loud, like it's tons of personalities, like, and you just make reels all the time. <laughs> honestly my favorite reels are just well, where they put music on in point i mean those are my favorite you guys know what we're talking about it's cool it want to they- make six figs <laughs> point work hard <laughs> know your audience know yourself know yourself <laughs> double your rate that's my favorite always like want to make six figs double your rate know your worth <laughs> You're like, but I just started. Double your rate. Yeah, I love like the sexy dances, kind of just like the sway back and mm-hmm. forth, like hip to hip. And yeah. it's like girls' rule. conscious connection yes, takes being present, yes. being yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, bless everyone it's doing like, those because I can't do it. How to build a biz. <laughs> cut the bullshit. <laughs> cut, cut the bullshit. <laughs> do your thing. <laughs> Double your rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but I'm I'm liking reels. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been really fun. <laughs> it's been really fun. I just like the quickness. I don't know if you guys have checked out our reels, but do it. <laughs> do it. They're really valuable. They're super valuable. Super valuable. Um, thinking about our episode today, I was we have on Elizabeth April. We'll get into that in a moment, but. We, we were talking in the interview about ascension symptoms, which, you know, believe it or not, but we've been experiencing some like wild ass physical symptoms lately. I don't know yeah. how you all have been feeling. Let us know. DM us. Um, I had, thankfully, I don't have it anymore. I had a, inten- I've never gotten headaches in my life, intense headaches I for had, about yeah. two and a half weeks straight. And I was worried. I was going into like, uh oh, something's wrong with my brain. Like, and and I there was no rhyme or reason to it. I wasn't really wasn't drinking, no excess sugar. I was sleeping well. Like it was weird, and then they just completely disappeared mm. out of nowhere. Wow. And so for anyone you know listening, some of the ascension symptoms. So as you know, our light bodies 
are becoming clearer, our consciousness is expanding, and this happens through the spiritual ascension process. So as we move from 3D to 5D, it's happening to all of us as more light enters our universe and enters the world. It's just part of the process. And so some ascension symptoms that we talk about when we're talking about that spiritual evolution or that ascension from 3D to 5D could be ringing in the ears, could be sleep interruption, feeling drained, headaches, um, heart palpitations or fluttering sensation, uh, changes in body temperature, a feeling of detachment, increased sensitivity to nature, increases in synchronicity, which is powerful, or feeling more introverted. Um, I've definitely had the exhaustion for sure. Yes. It's yes. been, it's been, wow. Where, when does it hit you normally? All, I, it's I, like all day. I, <laughs> all day. I've been napping a lot. I've yeah. been sleeping a lot and just, yeah, overall feeling completely tired but I think a lot of people are feeling that too but for mine it's also you know to be to be real it's not working out as much yeah you know it's like eating is fine but it's not you know you're not really doing the things that are giving you full energy Mm -hmm. you know like a lot of times our workouts would give us a lot of energy Mm -hmm. so doing the slow pace stuff is the bomb but for me sometimes the the quicker movements help my energy so but yeah I wonder if you guys are feeling feeling any of those right now you probably are if you're listening um but definitely take take the time to rest as much as you can this year yeah the nap piece isn't you inspire me always yeah when you take naps Milana Snow takes a lot of naps too she always says that she's like just took a two-hour nap <laughs> like sick that's like dude if you're taking naps like that you're you're royalty 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 takes naps I queens don't argue agree. and queens nap <laughs> it's true because I also think It's like a, I think naps are learned. Yes. It's like the world can wait. That honestly is like a worthiness thing. Yes. I have had to work through. Like I've been like, oh, I can't even on Sunday. I was like, I was like, oh, I have all these things to do, whatever. And I'm like, I can't nap now. I'm like fucking nap. Yep. I remember we knew families who would nap together, which I love, but my, I mean, never catch my, never, (laughs) not actually together. Gross and cool. (laughs) In their separate rooms. But there would be a time when the family just like rests. I mean, never catch my family doing that. Honestly, totally. It was always do, 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 do. Running around. Yeah. My mom is the number one do, do, do. My dad, yeah. The Mm. most. My dad's very chill. My mom was number one do. Our vacations, 0% chill. Totally. Zero. No one naps. My mom like naps now. (laughs) Does but, she? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yep. I think it's like a blood sugar thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, she knows what her body needs. I know, honestly. So this one is going to be amazing with Elizabeth April. I was introduced to Elizabeth April from a dear friend of the pod, April Fender. She is Santa Monica Healing. I did an episode with her probably... Um, or an IG live with her recently. And then we did an episode with her probably a year ago talking about Reiki healing and talking about aliens. So this is another conversation that is super out there, but is what you guys have wanted from us. Um, You guys always ask for the more woo woo, the more out there, the more spiritual, more about aliens. And this conversation is that. So As with all of these, we ask you to come with a super open mind. This is not 100% our beliefs, but it is a belief and it is an idea and perspective. We are so excited to continue to expand our minds and your minds as well through these insightful, interesting conversations. Yeah, we just ask that you have an open mind and heart with this one. Um, And in this conversation, we talk about so, so much. You might need to listen a few times. And actually what I love about watching um, and listening to Elizabeth on YouTube is that she often says like this, this video is like a a light code in itself. And I really feel like this conversation is one as well. And so we talk about how we are um, hybrid beings and we talk about like the different uh, galactic families that we could be a part of and where she's a part of. Um, We talk about like why we're here as human beings. We talk about ascension symptoms. Um, we talk about her journey uh, in realizing her gifts. It was something that she um, recognized very early on and was honing. Like, imagine this, like in your dorm room, like talking to the Galactic Federation of Light. <laughs> huh? Insane. Yeah. Yeah. So she's she's really powerful. And she 
She does not do any research. She's not like reading books or watching documentaries. She's very much removed from um, the news, science, everything. But she has channeled like quantum physics and has talked to uh, physicists. And they're like, so you have never like learned this formally? So it's really, it's really profound. Yeah, she's super cool. She's an expert channeler. Um, and she's just super real, easy to understand and down to earth. So yes. this is going to be such a good one. We are so excited for you to listen. And if you are fans of Elizabeth April, welcome to Almost 30. We're so grateful that you're here. Yeah, you can follow Elizabeth on Instagram at Elizabeth.April. Find her on YouTube, Elizabeth April, and her website, ElizabethAprilCom. And thank you all for subscribing, rating, and reviewing on Apple Podcasts. That means the world to us. Um, and we have our accelerator coming up for uh, podcasters who want to grow and monetize. We're really uh, passionate about podcasting and this part of your journey where it's like, okay, you've launched your show, you have a listener base, but want to grow and potentially make this a business is a point in our journey that we learned so much. And so we wanted to be able to support an intimate group and really work one-on-one with people to uh, get them to where they want to be. Yep. It's going to be amazing. So yourpodcastpro.com and you can email your podcast pro Y-O-U-R at almost 30 podcast.com for more information on that and to fill out an application. That's going to be amazing. And you can also join us for one of our new paradigm digital workshop series happening in the next couple months on topics like sex and body image, self-care, tarot and channeling, breath work, human design, and uh, a writing, a poetry and writing workshop. That's yeah. going to be really interesting. We it's a done super like diverse that. lineup and we're so excited about that. So to join us for one of those amazing workshops, you can go to almost30.com and go to New Paradigm Digital Series. So those are going to be happening live via Zoom with people all over the world with some amazing healers, leaders, and teachers in the next two months. So good. And lastly, our friend Gabby Bernstein is hosting a webinar. Um, she you know, we love Gabby so damn much, but she has a webinar, free webinar on intuition reactivation uh, coming up on October 1st. So you can go to GabbyBernstein.com or the link in our show notes will uh, reserve a spot. So thank you all for listening. Enjoy this one and we'll see you on the other side. See you on the other side. I told Kristen when you were getting your water, I was like, I feel, I know. And I never feel like this. I feel like a celebrity's here. Truly. <laughs> Aww. Truly. No, really not nice. joking. I was telling her I love like, her super chat. Watch- she's like, thanks so much for that kind super chat. And then <laughs> is able to like go right back into like something so fucking deep. <laughs> yeah, truly. I feel and and Krista introduced me to to you. And so over the last it, it was almost like divine timing when I started watching your videos consistently and because of everything going on in the world. Mm-hmm. And it is just like this very real supportive hum like that I can yeah. like I literally at the end of the day I'll go to one of your videos whether it's in the sauna or I'll take a walk and it's just so comforting mm-hmm. um because it like rings true to me so mm-hmm. I think you know what I love too when I think about people watching you on YouTube I know it's people who are like seeking that light and that truth um you know high above this kind of like matrix that mm-hmm. we're that we're living in so and there's a beautiful positive spin to it too yeah you know yeah it's powerful and I know a little bit about your story and we don't usually like go into stories but I think with you it's so special and I think people it just gives a lot of context for the channeling that you do and sort of how you do it and I know we were talking about psychic attacks before um when did you come into your full understanding and knowing of your gifts and your power Mm -hmm. yeah so I mean, I was born with clairvoyant abilities, so a lot of extrasensory stuff, um, the ability to see chakras and auras, and I was even talking to interdimensionals. Of course, I was raised Catholic, so I thought I was talking to God. <laughs> okay, same. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. and, uh, and so, yeah, so I was born definitely very different, and I didn't realize I was tapping into past life energy and, um, you know, teaching my friend at six years old how to levitate. You know, I said, if you concentrate hard enough, you can sit there and close your eyes and, and you'll be able to levitate off of this pillow. I mean, I didn't know. Right. I didn't know what I was. I doing. was like playing doctor at five years. <laughs> <I know>. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> also weird. <laughs> 
so yeah so so I was born with those abilities but it was tough you know it was tough to fit in and and, and just kind of be myself so um, at around the age of 10 I shut off all my abilities and I really um, went into sports you know and talk about metaphysical to very physical mm, right yes and I tried everything and I was good at it and and all of a sudden I was very accepted and and uh, and I felt like you know once again like everyone else and and then, you know, I went into a deep depression. And I think a lot of star seeds, I think a lot of old souls go through this phase of anxiety, depression, you know, really trying to find their own truth and, and, and find themselves. So around 14, 15, 16, there was maybe not necessarily a suicide attempt, but it just kind of a, a calling to say, someone pay attention to, to the struggle that I'm going through. Um, and I was really questioning my reality. And I really felt like, if this is it, you know, you go to high school, you go to more school, you get in a bunch of debt, then you find a nine to five, then you settle down, you have a bunch of kids and you keep working till you're dead. I'm out. You know, I don't want this. This is not the life for me. So I ended up, um, you know, really seeking for answers. I went everywhere to doctors, to psychologists. I even sat down with a priest. Oh, and God. I said, I did that before too. Kill me, right? Mm, yeah. But 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 these are supposed to be the authority figures in yeah. society that people look up to, and I was like, you have some answers clearly. So tell me, why are we here? What is the meaning of life? You know, what is really going on? What's the purpose of all of this? And every single time, I was met with blank stares and disappointing answers, and that basically led me to my first ever past life regression which happened at 16. It was my dad who actually studied past life regression techniques. And he took me into my first past life regression. And that really opened up a whole world of, oh my goodness, I'm not just 16. This is not just my first lifetime. I am so much more than this right now. And it also opened me up to the concept of simultaneous time. If me in this present moment can experience five entire past lifetimes, then what else is possible? It really opened up a can of worms of my experience and, and uh, understanding my purpose and understanding that if no one has the answers that I'm looking for, then I'm going to take it upon myself to find those answers myself. And that's kind of what my whole purpose has been is to find the answers to these bigger questions that now, uh, luckily, I know other people are also questioning, mm -hmm. you know, because back then I didn't know that anyone else was thinking the same way and and couldn't find those people. So I was really a lone wolf for, for quite a long time. And now it's so amazing and validating to me to kind of be at this place where everyone else is questioning. And then one other major kind of awakening or aspect um, is at 18, I went away to a 10 day silent meditation retreat called Vipassana. And on the second night of meditation, I was abducted very consciously uh, by some interdimensional beings. And at that point in time, all my psychic abilities came back online. I was astral traveling, remote viewing, lucid dreaming. Um, telepathy was definitely a big concept of, of, in my life. But I mean, I never really thought that aliens were real or that, you know, they were here. Right. I mean, there's got to be something else out there. But I didn't know until they were in my face. Um, and that really opened me up to a world of, wow, you know, if we've had past lifetimes on this planet, I wonder if we've ever had past lifetimes off this planet. Mm -hmm. So then I started doing past life regressions for people and taking them into interdimensional lifetimes and understanding, you know, who are these interdimensionals? What is their reason and purpose for being on this planet? And, and who are we in relation to them? And that really opens up a whole other can of worms. So yeah, so my biggest topics, the things that I really love focusing on are quantum physics and the, the fundamental basics of this reality and understanding how malleable this reality really is. Um, and then spirituality, of course, anything, energy, vibration, third eye, the power of our soul and our consciousness, and then aliens, you know? So I, I kind of go all across the board. Um, which makes it difficult for me to say, I am just a psychic or I am just a, you know, a, a, a hybrid, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to label myself. And, and luckily I haven't really had to, um, and people just kind of accept me for who I am. Mm. I guess when people hear, we've had past life regressions as well, and it was so healing to what you said about like, you know, bringing that like quantum field into your reality, understanding that you have lived other lifetimes and how, um, there's so many realities at play in this moment. So 
for just to go a little bit deeper on that and help people to understand what that means, could you give an example of a past lifetime that you discovered and how you've connected it to what you're experiencing now? Mm-hmm, yeah. So, I mean, there's many. <clears throat> and uh, at this point in time, you know, I I stub my toe and I'm, I'm thrown into a past lifetime. Right. So I, I you know, I I will cross a stranger on the street and be thrown into a past lifetime with that person, right? So I'm, I've now experienced a lot of my past lifetimes, uh, as well as interdimensional. But one of the first ones that I ever uh, tuned into, which was in that past life regression with my dad at 16, the very last one that we went into, and he brought me to one of my most significant past lifetimes, obviously on this planet, I was... I don't know how to explain it. I guess uh, a shaman. I I was a male. And I want to say that this was maybe Aztec, Mayan type of era. And just because I saw the the, the flat top pyramids. And it was just this scene. It was just a very quick moment of this scene right at the end. But uh, I will say that I went through the whole lifetime. And when I was a kid, they ended up finding me very similar to how they find um, the Dalai Lama. Right. So they put me through a series of tests. And for whatever reason, I chose all the right objects and I went through the test and and they knew that it was me. So they took me in at a very young age for training. And it was just a lot of meditation, a a lot of exploration that way. And so at, you know, at at one point in this life, um, I was at the top of this pyramid and um, it was nighttime and there was these candles that were lit all over the room. It was a stone room. And there was a circle of other men, and they looked like um, also maybe shamans or monks, you know. And there was one place that was left for me in the the circle of these men. And they were all, you know, sitting there cross-legged, closing their eyes, clearly in meditation. And they were all waiting for me, right? I was the last person to come into this circle. And so I, I go into the circle, and I sit down. And the second I sit down and I close my eyes, instantly my soul left my body right so this is astral traveling and I actually joined all of the consciousness of all of the other men who were sitting in that circle and together as a collective we actually joined and we went right into the center of the universe Mm -hmm. and that's where we used to gain access to our information and it was the first time in this lifetime at 16 that I was able to re-experience the feeling of what I now call cosmic euphoria, mm-hmm. when you are absolutely connected to source and you feel all the feels. And, and back then it was almost like, um, like a psychedelic or ayahuasca experience, right, where you see all the colors and the visuals and whatever, but I couldn't, I wasn't able to perceive it that way. And also... At 16, I just didn't know how to perceive that, but I could feel it. And I just started crying and crying and crying. And and my dad's like, what? What is it? What did you see? And I said, it's not, I didn't see it. I experienced it. Mm. And and now I understand that, you know, we don't need plant medicine. That's just a tool. That's just a technology. We are the ultimate technology, you know, and we are the ultimate you know, thing that can connect to pure source. And, and that's what my mission is, is, is helping other people have those experiences to connect to themselves and ultimately connect to the source of the universe to understand that there is no separation. There's only a perceived illusion of this matrix reality. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's almost like, you know, I remember going through a period of like intense, um, just working with so much duality in my life and I saw everything dualistic and it w- almost made me crazy. You know, it was like, and then that, but that was part of the evolution to becoming an understanding that everything is one and that it's all part of, you know, the creator's experience. Um, But I want to talk about your, your intentional abduction. So did you choose which, which group of entities you wanted to be abducted by or who, Mm -hmm. (laughs) how did you do that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I believe that all of our contracts, you know, the majority of our experiences, especially our big experiences, are all predestined. And it's not God or some man in the sky who's, you know, predetermining our lives. It's us, right? As a soul, we choose what we want to sign up for before we come here so that then we can learn the lessons that we need to learn and grow as a soul and, and, you know, within the limitations of this incarnation so yeah, so I chose that experience. Um, and the funny thing is, is that I've had a lot of interdimensional experiences now at this time in my life. I'm 28 now. And um, 
And all of my experiences have been super positive. And, and some people comment and say that, you know, one of the negative things about me is that I'm an over optimist, right? Because people have had very um, scary experiences with interdimensionals. And here I am saying, they're great. Let's all get along, <laughs> right? And I, and I do, you know, understand that the, the duality and the polarity exists within interdimensionals as well. Um, but that was my only ever negative experience with interdimensionals. It was a very fear-based experience. Mm. And it was my first one, first one consciously. And, uh, and so I chose that. And, and part of the reason now understanding, looking back, part of the reason why I chose that is because I needed to have a certain level of compassion and understanding for other people who have had negative experiences with interdimensionals and be able to, you know, teach them how to bring in the positive experiences and, uh, and help them understand their contracts with those experiences as well. So so yeah, so but it, it definitely opened me up and I was able to override the fear of, of that initial contact. Mm-hmm. What group was that? So this group was the Tall Whites. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah. it's kind of, you know, it's it's a very general, that's not really a species name. It's just yeah. kind of describing what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, very tall, very pale, very skinny, um, kind of humanoid in nature, but they had the ability to just drive so much fear you know into me and even at the time I'm like this fear isn't my own like this is so intense that this is not even my own fear Mm -hmm. you know there's nothing Mm -hmm. on this planet that would make me feel this way right so and then later I realized that they actually have the ability to release the chemical Mm -hmm. compound um, within the human that that drives that fear right so yeah, so that's that's but I've I've actually never communicated or interacted with them since and I'm very grateful for their presence in my life at that time. Mm. Wow. I didn't know that they were negatively polarized. I guess within that within different entity groups, so if we say like tall whites as an example, would there be tall whites that are po- are positive or Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So just like the human, this is how I explain interdimensionals. Just like human beings, uh, every species has good and bad in them. Even the angels, even the the Palladians, you know, have have bad, you know, bad eggs in them, and that's fine. I mean, a soul is a soul, and and you work with the 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 incarnated body that you have in that lifetime, and you learn the lessons that you need to learn. Mm. At what point did you? connect to the Galactic Federation and obviously for people listening who don't know what that is I'd love for you to describe what that is um and also just on a on a larger scale like I think some people listening might be assuming I could never like connect with beings I could never connect with the Galactic Federation but I I kind of want to like close that gap and have people understand um, how they could do that or just become a bit more connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So the Galactic Federation of Light, I kind of understand it and explain it as, um, a government system for the universe. Uh, but they're, they're the good guys. I mean, there's, there's corruption everywhere, you know, on this planet, off this planet. Um, but ultimately their main mission is just, just to kind of drive peace and oneness within the universe. So it's they're not mis- their mission isn't all light and all love. Mm-hmm. It's actually just the balance of duality and polarity in the universe. And I was shocked to understand that we even needed a government system for the universe. Um, I studied global political economy in university, and I'm like, come on, guys, we haven't figured this out yet. Mm-hmm. We really still need a structure. Um, but we do. We do out there. And once again, they're just here for peace treaties. There's a lot of councils that exist within the GFL. And there's an infinite number of, of species that exist within the Galactic Federation as well. Um, that are all here to drive that oneness. It's like, all right, darkness needs to exist. So you stay in your lane, we'll stay in our lane, and we'll just have peace and harmony, right? So that's what they're really here for. Um, And yeah, and so I was first introduced to the Galactic Federation. I didn't even know it was a thing, you know, back in 2011. So my abduction experience was in 2010. I was 18, And then about a year later, um, I was meditating and actually, as a matter of fact, I was hanging out with friends in in my living room in my, you know, student residence or whatever. And all of a sudden I started feeling very lightheaded, um, just very sleepy. 
And so I said, hey, guys, you know, keep hanging out. I'm just going to go into the other room. So I went into my bedroom and I sit down on my bed. And the second I close my eyes, there was this huge, like seven foot tall white light being Mm. that walks through the wall and stands in front of me. And I could just, you know, um, I can just see that it was, you know, a humanoid figure, but I couldn't really see any details, right? Just Mm. pure white light. And so he speaks to me telepathically. And at this point, this is not that weird. You know, like my life is kind of weird at this point. Right? <laughs> so that's like, this is kind of normal. Everyone's like eating goldfish in the next room. And you're, you're <laughs> got like, hold on. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, uh, and so he says, he says, I'm a Palladian and I was sent from the Galactic Federation. And uh, there is a meeting that you need to attend. And the meeting is happening in two days from now. And the meeting was December 21st, 2011. I just remember that date so because he told me about it. And he said that this meeting is going to take place at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which was my time zone at that time. And, uh, and, and he says, you need to make sure that you're awake. You need to be conscious for this meeting. And I said, okay, great. And so I walk into the other room with all my friends. I'm like, yeah, I just talked to some being. And they're like, okay, cool. Like, I mean, like I had, I had friends that were open to that. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so then two days later, um, I mean, I was a student at the time I was used to all nighters. So I took a nap, I woke up at 1am, chugged a coffee, did some meditating. And at 2am right on the dot, he comes back into the room. And I said, oh, nice to see you again. He says, okay, Elizabeth, follow me. So then um, he goes out of the room and I follow him. At this For your point, third eye. Um, yeah, so astral traveling, remote viewing. Got it. Uh, yeah, so you, you just soul out of the body. At this point in time, I was like bored in a university classroom, traveling around the room just for fun because that's what I did, you know. So um, astral traveling was very easy for me. So I, I followed him and believe it or not, we actually went inside the center of the moon didn't know the moon was hollow thought it was a rock floating around apparently it's not Mm -mm. uh had no idea at that point and and there was this huge kind of like um like a huge almost like a coliseum like it was a circular room and there was seating all on the outside of the circular room and there was all these beings from all over the place and there was I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of, of physical beings there. And it looked like two two representat- uh, representatives from every species were there. And then there was also tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of astral bodies that were all floating around on the outside. And I was obviously one of those astral bodies. And I was assuming that most of those astral bodies were from planet Earth, right? I don't know if it was like an atmosphere thing that we just couldn't go there physically, or if it was just kind of a pain in the ass to, to haul all these, yeah. <laughs> you know, all these humans from planet Earth. So... Yeah, and then in that meeting, it was really incredible. There was, uh, it looked like a very tall, like almost like a gray species, um, but n- not the typical mm-hmm. kind of gray that we know. Um, very beautiful, almost like a dark purplish skin, actually. And it was a woman, and she was standing on a platform in the middle, like hovering in the middle of um, a, of this room. And as she was speaking, I heard it as English. I never even thought you know, about it, that that other beings were hearing it as different languages, but it was all telepathic, right? It was all projected telepathically. And she introduced me to all these concepts. She was talking about in the takeover on planet Earth and, and, and the plan, pr- you know, proceeding forward. She was talking about the 144,000 being these ambassadors coming to planet Earth and helping to awaken, you know, humanity. Um, you know, she talked about a lot of things that, that really opened me up. And, and that's, that was the first time I was introduced to the Galactic Federation. And then I wasn't too long after that where I was actually invited to sit in on a council meeting um, with specifically one council, which is, I call them the Palladian Security Council because they deal with issues related to planet Earth. Maybe it's a war, maybe it's an environmental issue, right? But the, it's like they, they are here for our security and, and safety. So I deal mostly with them Um, which is really beautiful and they've really kind of open, you know, accepted me with open arms as a human being. And, and, uh, and I think part of my purpose is to relay messages from them to humanity, um, in a way that humanity can easily digest. Does it also feel like you're like, they assist in getting your message out there? Cause I'm just thinking about like your, your earth career and how like organically successful 
it has been, it is, and continue will continue to be? And do you feel like you're kind of in co-collaboration with them? Definitely co-collaboration. Um, I mean, they were showing me images of me on stage in front of tens of thousands of people at the age of 18 when I thought I was going to go into, you know, be a lawyer, you know. Wow. So, I mean, yeah, for sure. My path has always been set in motion. I don't know if they are necessarily getting me, you know, the the, the people. Um, but You're like was... more YouTube subscribers this month. <laughs> <laughs> Please and thank you. Yes. No. Um, but I released a video. Uh, they told me back in 2016, which is actually when I went online and, you know, I was channeling things from 2010. Um, but I didn't go online because I was pretty scared uh, until 2016. And I released this video when they were talking about the Mandela effect and the splitting of the planets and the 3D, 5D. And they taught me all of that and, mm -hmm. and, and were explaining that. And I said, this is mind blowing. Like I have to tell people. So I put out a video on YouTube. It was like one of my first videos about the Mandela effect. And it got like five views. <laughs> <laughs> now it's probably up there. People yes, are ready. It's right. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty good. good. But I'm like, come five on, guys. Views. Like you got, Honestly. You that. gave me all this information. But there's five <laughs> people who are interested. I could just see them being like, that's amazing. They like love just like the whole video <laughs> process. I loved in the video you did the other day when they were like, um, you. they said something like, listen to your gut. And how they were laughing mm -hmm. that that's a phrase that we use. Yeah, that's Like it's right. so yeah. funny, like interdimensional <laughs> beings. It's like they'll say things that we say we think is normal and they'll kind of like giggle or laugh <laughs> well, at it. The really funny thing is that a um, couple months ago I was channeling them just for a little check-in video. And, uh, and so I, I was like sitting at my computer and I don't usually do this often. Like usually I kind of take their information. I relay it in my own way, you know, and I, I just kind of add my human to it. But in a couple of videos, um, as you guys probably have seen, you know, I take them verbatim. So word for word, I will write down what they're saying. So that requires me channeling and then coming back down into my body and then writing the, the words out. And so I was doing this and I had like seven Palladian, like eighth dimensional Palladian men in my like right behind me, like astral And they're all like, say this, say this, say this. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the channeling, the beeper, the timer goes off for the oven. Right. I'm like. <laughs> Guys, uh, sorry, just one second. I got to go. I got to do dinner. <laughs> and they were like following me around, like doing dinner. And I'm like, can you give me some space? Like I'm trying to just do the human thing. And they were just so fascinated at how we do what we do because they're not usually in this density, right? Mm. So they're usually up on a ship and everything just kind of just appears there. I don't even know how they eat, but, yes. you know, and so they were just so fascinated by the whole dinner process. And, uh, uh, you know, it was really funny. <laughs> I love that. It was really Sweet. funny. I'm like, give me some space guys like come on <laughs> i heard that um it's interesting so do they always meet in the moon um not typically no okay. a lot of the meetings are happen on this giant mothership uh, okay. that hovers outside of earth's atmosphere but i mean right now i'll tell you that planet earth is the biggest reality show to the entire universe so there are infinite amounts of interdimensional beings who are all very intrigued and very interested on planet earth humans what we're doing here and you know back in 2010 or in 2011 when i first got introduced i thought to myself why why are all these crazy high dimensional beings all interested in lowly third dimensional us you know aren't we just like a an ant-like species aren't there trillions of terrestrial planets out there in the universe like why are all these beings interested in us and that's one of the things that i've channeled uh, and, and finally, they gave me the information. It took them a couple of years to give me the information. I think it was maybe waiting on humanity to be ready for it. But it's the fact that humans are the, this hybrid experiment. And we have the DNA from many different interdimensional beings all over the universe. And if we can love each other, if we can get along, then we end the war of all wars in the universe between the lowest vibrational species and the highest vibrational species. So for me, it's like, yeah, the, the number one concept is has and always will be love, right? Love for one another. And right now, society is going through a purging. We need to purge out the polarity. We need to see the corruption for what it is in order to release it and overcome it and uh, step into our power. I'd love to further explain what that hybrid, hybrid project is and who started it and how we 
we play into it. And if people are feeling like, I kind of feel like I'm human, but also mm-hmm. Pleiadian, like also yeah. this, I'd love to just talk about that for a moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll say right away that there are many, many, like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of individuals on this planet, especially in your network, especially in my network, Mm -hmm. who all feel like this isn't their home, who all feel like their body isn't their own. There's this deep inner questioning that we all have, thinking that there's got to be something more than just this. And, uh, and, and, and it is a, an aspect of your star seed, right? It's an aspect of your soul being so much more than just a human. And you know so much more than just what you see. And so a long time ago, um, a long, long time ago, uh, there was a mystic who, that's, that's what I would call her, a mystic that worked for the Galactic Federation. And she said, one day there will be a planet and one day there will be a civilization that will end the war of all wars. And no one knew what she was talking about. It wasn't until years and years later when they started to understand that we have enough genetic understanding that we can start to create these hybrids. And typically at first they would take one species and another species and create this duality kind of hybrid. Um, And then eventually, you know, their genetic research got so advanced that they were able to take multiple different species to create a hybrid. And so they um, found basically this solar system and planet Earth. And they said this is going to be the perfect planet with all of the perfect circumstances and environment to house this hybrid species. So at this point in time, I mean, through a long history on planet Earth, you know, many different species have basically interbred and genetically mixed with um, our original blueprint, which was Neanderthal, um, to create what you see here today. And that's why we're so advanced and we're advancing so quickly is because we have so much more. And that's also why science says that we only have, you know, 8% of our DNA unlocked And when I found that out years and years ago, I'm like, what? Why isn't anyone talking about this? This is the most important thing. We only have 10% of our DNA unlocked and the other 90% is junk. Oh, don't worry about that stuff. That's just junk. I'm like, what do you mean it's junk? If we have other DNA to unlock, what could that potentially mean? That could potentially mean that we could regrow a limb if it mm-hmm. if it you know gets taken off like that. We have so much power within us, but they refuse to look at it um, because they probably know you know that we are these hybrid beings and they don't want us to step into our power, right? And so part of the aspect of waking up and this concept of awakening is waking up to who we are you know, coming out of this cloud of ignorance of just this third dimension reality and stepping into this awareness and understanding that we are multifaceted beings and we have an accumulation of every other past lifetime, both on and off this planet in this present moment. Um, So yeah, so once again, that's part of my purpose as well, is just to kind of teach people that there's so much more than just who they think they are and and it was really the Galactic Federation alongside the Palladians um, who really kind of created this project. So right now, I'll just say that I believe we have at least, even though I know that we have many other DNA strands within us, but I believe that at least we have um, obviously the Neanderthal. That's our kind of first original blueprint. And then we have Palladians, who I believe came and mixed with us um, back in ancient Atlantis and Lymeria. And then we have the Anunnaki, who were considered the giants in the Bible. Um, And then also we have greys and angelic uh, beings as well, uh, as far as their DNA within us. And we have many, many others, like Octurians and Andromedans and Syrians. Um, So that's why there's this longing, and that's why there's this gap. And right now at this time in society... We're given everything, especially this younger generation. You know, it's like we are just spoon fed. It's like you have all the education and you have all the food you need and you have the support system and the love and you have a roof over your head. And there's nothing more that we are uh, striving for and surviving for. So now the last piece of the puzzle is expanding our consciousness. If everything in the physical reality is taken care of for us, 
then we need to expand our consciousness. But the problem is, is that we're not given the tools to understand how to expand our consciousness. So all these poor kids, all these millennial Gen Z, you know, they're all suffering with anxiety and depression at the age of 10 years old. And they have nothing in, in, in kind of modern society view, nothing to be depressed about. They haven't ever gone through a hard time. And the reason why is because there's a huge aspect of themselves that is lacking you know, that no one's ever taught them about, you know, and, and it's just so sad to see these children suffer because deep down they are so much more than just these human beings and no one's actually telling them that. No one's teaching them that they are greater than just who they are. They're teaching them that if you get a good job, you can get a fancy car, then you can stay in a nice place mm-hmm. and you're going to be happy. If you dance you know? enough on TikTok, you'll get enough followers <laughs> and you'll be happy. Terrified. The more yeah. followers, the happier yeah. you'll be. Right. It's yeah, funny too exactly. how you were, but you were depressed, you know, when you were young yeah. at around 10. Yeah. I was very much so too. I didn't know how to describe it. I would call it the feeling. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, really that that longing for more. And I remember in high school too, I would be, I just was so on one about figuring out what life was about and so obsessed with like, what is the meaning of life? Like I would literally be anywhere I was, we'd be at the UDF parking lot with my friends, like at a gas station. I'd be like, but what's the point of everything? Like, what's the point of everything? And that longing I think is so true for so many. Um, And then so for people to really, you know, understand And I'm thinking right now, you know, is it a 3D thing for us to want to like label where our, where we may have come from, or would it be a helpful understanding for us to know if we're from Lumeria or if we're from, you know, or we're, or Mm -hmm. if we are Arturian so that we can connect to that ancestry and feel more whole? Yeah. So it's a little bit of both, right? It's, it's always a balance. Um, So ultimately I truly believe that understanding this aspect of yourself is a soul fragment that you're bringing back to once again, just like you mentioned, be more of a whole individual. And that is so needed, right? To really bring these soul fragments back. And that's why I believe past life regression and understanding your past lifetimes, even on this planet, is also very important for us to realize, so to bring back these soul fragments, to bring back this remembrance. That's what the awakening is. It's a remembrance of who you are and how powerful you are. And so it's really important to say uh, an aspect of myself is Palladian, but most likely an aspect of yourself is Anunnaki, is reptilian, is tall, tall white, is gray. You know, we have an infinite number of aspects of ourselves. Um, so it's it's difficult when people ask me, where's my home? You know, where? And it's like, I'll, I can relate to you the most significant cosmic connection that you have um, that you may consider home, but you have many different soul aspects and soul fragments. It's kind of like asking, what's the, where's my home on planet Earth? You know, what's the country that, you know, from past lifetimes that I most resonate with? Um, It's kind of difficult to pinpoint. But once again, you're bringing back those soul fragments. But it's really also important that if someone understands these soul fragments from a limited third dimension perspective, then they can very easily get stuck in that Just like we get stuck in the, um, you know, attachment to an identity such as I'm a mother or I'm a life coach or I'm a artist or whatever those attachments may be, we can very easily get attached to I'm a Palladian, you know, which is beautiful. It really is. But that can also be limiting. Mm. Right. So and the same thing with psychic and spiritual abilities. As we raise our vibration, as we bring back soul fragments, as we unlock our DNA, we become naturally more psychic. And I believe that what I've done in this lifetime, that's not a special thing. I believe everyone has the capacity to do all of these things. And um, when we step into that, it's like, why limit yourself at just mediumship? Why limit yourself at just telepathy? Why limit yourself at just channeling? Why not do it all? You know, so I really encourage people to just kind of, yeah, find your niche, find your purpose, find your puzzle piece for sure, because everyone has a special unique thing that they're bringing to the planet. But also, you don't know what that is unless you really push to experience a little bit of everything. Mm, Love that. I do want to note and talk about the fact that you don't necessarily do any research or watch the news or anything like that. So um, I'd love to know, was that always just your intuition telling you that or was this a way to 
just make your intuition and your psychic abilities stronger. And then part B of that is like, I mean, I feel like people are watching the news more than ever. Mm -hmm. And there is kind of this, um, you know, addiction and like trapped feeling around like needing to know that we're going to be okay, needing to know like what is coming. And I just love to hear your thoughts around why that is, why that is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it was actually back in a long time ago. I don't know what what year it was, but it was around like uh, 15, 16 years old when I started to really kind of reawaken when I was told, and I remember I was like sitting on a bus going to high school, <laughs> you know, and I was told um, by my galactic family that I was not to do any external research. Um, of course, I went to university and I, you know, read books and, and but it was no external research on what I'm what I'm supposed to channel. So um, extraterrestrials, spirituality, um, you know, I think the only book that I've ever really read was um, the Celestine Prophecy, which was really beautiful, and that was powerful. And I read those at like 14, 15. Um, but other than that, you know, I've stayed away from other channelers, uh, all self-help books, and and I've gotten a lot throughout the years, and I'm I have sure. to just kindly reject. You know? Same, <laughs> thank honestly. You, but no, thank you. You have and, a closet of self-help yeah, books. Honestly. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, so for me, it's been very important to kind of keep the information as pure as possible. And at first, I mean, I started doing public speaking at the age of like 19, 20 years old, and um, I was really like frowned upon in the community, especially the alien community, the alien conferences, because we've got ex-military, we have secret space program guys, we've got pretty much all these middle-aged white dudes who, ha who have been in the industry who have credibility. So how can I, as a 20-year-old, say that I have all this experience and all this knowledge and all these past lifetimes and have zero credibility because I haven't done any research because I've got nothing backing me? So I, I ended up getting uh, uninvited to one of my alien conferences, um, which was fine because I had to move on. But and, and it was because of that reason, because I was uncredible. Right. And now it's really interesting. Nowadays, it's actually part of my credibility. A hundred percent. To not do any external research and to have all the information that I have. So it's just kind of funny. And I'm glad that I stuck with my guns and and I really kind of aligned to that. But people send me videos all the time and. And, you know, I just, there's no interest. And my wife, she's obsessed with UFO documentaries and all of that. And it's like, I can't, that's my life. I mean, that's not an enjoyable, like, pastime of me just relaxing and watching that. Like, I <laughs> just, that's my everyday. You're like, that's me. <laughs> no, honestly. Exactly. It is, so, it's like work again. Yeah. It's work, yeah. yeah totally. It, it really is. So, so, and I'm glad. I'm glad that I have that, that. But it also keeps me a little bit ignorant as well because I only know what I know. There's a lot of things that I don't know, you know, just like the quarantine, you know, I just, there's a lot of these aspects, but it's also really beautiful how people are like, oh my God, Dolores Cannon says the exact same thing. Or she also talks about 3D, 5D. I'm like, really? This is awesome. Because that gives me the validation that they're also all connecting with the Galactic Federation. And I think that that's why a lot of people find me and resonate with me because it's pure, you know, even though I still have my own perception and I still have my own limitations with language, you know, it, it resonates with people down to the core. I'm not taking all this information and then trying to make something of it. It's just it is what it is, you know. Yeah. So speaking. Yeah. Speaking of uh, in information and, you know, to your second question. Um, yeah. It, we have a really huge polarity that's going on right now on this planet. And uh, I think. Half of the people are obsessed and in consuming information and um, and the news. And I also think that half the people are fed up with it and they, they're completely removing themselves. And uh, and so we've got a polarity shift that's happening right now. And I believe that the planet is bad right now, but it's it's going to get worse, you know, and if I told you a year ago that the planet was going to get bad, you're like, OK, cool. You know, but you would have, would have never expected that it, it would be here, right? And in another year or two, you might not expect where it's going to go either, right? Or maybe we do anticipate that with the financial collapse and, and those kind of things. 
Um, but ultimately, you know, things have to get worse before they get better. And we have to see this polarity on the planet in order to come back into harmony. And so um, the biggest thing that I would recommend to everyone is just stop watching the news. Just stop, you know, taking on so much information. But then when we look at the new age and spirituality, same thing. It's like people are consuming mm. so much external information even though it's high vibe even though it's good i mean you take any number one you know any one of these concepts on planet earth like vaccines and you're going to see the worst of the worst coming from doctors and scientists and you're going to see the best of the best and people are going to say this is really good for you like fluoride or this is really really bad for you right we're always going to have that polarity view and ultimately it's up up to the individual to discern and understand what feels right for them and if we are constantly taking on and inundated with information of every second of every day and it's so accessible then we have no idea what resonates and what doesn't resonate we are just acting and reacting to the information coming in rather than feeling and sitting to the information that we have within mm. Yeah, it is crazy if we think about, you know, everyone's like w listens to a few podcasts a day, watches a few YouTubes a day, and how much information everyone is like given is insane. And I feel like that I do that a lot within spirituality where I'll be very in it and I'll hear a bunch of different concepts and ideas and I'm not necessarily letting them sit as much as I would think. And I was even noticing that when I was like, um, when I when I pray lately I was like oh I'm praying and I'm almost like waiting for the words of someone else to come through me rather than like what is my actual prayer even when so when I'm praying or when I'm meditating at all you know I'll like do a little bit of protection and I'm like actually waiting to have someone else's words be used and I was thinking about that lately I was like oh I'm waiting for someone else's words that I can use in my prayer and in my meditation and I was like that's not really the point and that was like a huge, I actually had that realization the past two days. And I think for so many of us, it's like, that's what's tricky about spirituality is that, um, and even the alien stuff and even all of that, you know, even quantum physics, like I will be really into it, but I have to take a major break because each bit of information that you're fed within that realm is like incredibly, like not earth shattering, but it's reality shifting. Mm -hmm. And so it really has to like percolate and assimilate or else it's not really going to be remembered or, or used. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, it's the integration, yeah. right? And, and that's so needed. So we just need to make sure that we're not disempowering ourselves, no matter it be 3D news or 5D information. You know, you have that within you, right? And if you're constantly seeking, then there's something within that's lacking. And that's something to look at. And I think that we all kind Thanks, of get. April. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. All right. I'll call it out. Yeah, it's sure. so true. <laughs> um, you know, but but same thing with me. Like when I stepped into channeling, and and a lot of people ask me this, they're like, "Wow, like so you can really tap into anything?" And I'm like, "Yeah, pretty much." And so when I first, you know, stepped into this ability. I would tap in, especially like dating boys. Oh, oh my God. God. You know, it's just, Thank is God this I the one? Yeah, you know? honestly. And it was just, it and was, they would just it like was cackle. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just this crazy, exactly. They would laugh at me, literally. And so, yeah, you go to the Galactic Federation, you're like, so is he the one? <laughs> 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 exactly and but I was obsessed with everything like I would spill my water and say what's the meaning what's the purpose and there is actually literally like this profound lesson and meaning and purpose behind absolutely everything that we do and everything that happens to us because it is all predestiny um but it was so it was so much like even for me even though I wasn't reading a book or you know, getting the information elsewhere. It was just this obsession with knowing everything. So I get the face that people go through. But at a certain point in time, there's going to be more of a relaxed energy of just sitting and trusting. And, and every once in a while, I'll get a client who says, you know what, Elizabeth, you know, I don't I don't need this session that I booked. And I said, oh, like, can I just ask why? You know, because I'm always curious. And uh, and they say, well, you know, I've had a lot of revelations and I've realized that 
um, I answered all my own questions and I said, amazing. Yes. Thank you. You know, like I'm, you know, it's really, it's so enjoyable for me to see that in people and, uh, rather than like, when am I going to be rich? You know, but luckily I don't get those kind of clients. Um, you know, it's more like, what's my sole purpose? Like, what am I doing here? Like, what's my, you know, what are my past lifetimes? And, and that really fulfills my soul as well. But it's super draining doing a, a lot of channeling and a lot of sessions and, and those kind of things. I know I had her in my dream the other night. Dude, she was you channeling were in my for dream me last night. No what? way! Just the night before God. she was channeling well, for I me. I couldn't <laughs> sleep and like you kept and I knew it was because you were coming today, but it was, it was intense. What was she saying? Um, it what you weren't saying anything. It was all just like a feeling, uh. and I like what I felt was that you are like such a shepherd is the wrong word, but like That's a good one. it's yeah. just like I knew how important this conversation would be, and like my like human mind was just kind of like about mm. it but i was like okay i was like we're good i was like we like mm. she's coming we're having this conversation and she's mm. like such a light and knowing that like we could facilitate the conversation mm. and bring it to you know our community and and more like i think was just overall like very exciting for my wow, soul beautiful and you had a dream too yeah you were so we were in a room somewhere and you were like in a chair and you were like whoa you were channeling you're like whoa there's a lot going on you're like I'm overwhelmed with <laughs> all the messages like me, so. you were like whoa I'm overwhelmed with all the messages so it's like okay let's try and get a few and you said like something about my timelines you're like your timelines of speaking out against um, this topic have moved and shifted and now they're much sooner than they would have been previously wow. which was really powerful mm, it was about yeah. you know your video that you did Monday um, and then you also said in the other I see dollar signs I don't know what those means but I see dollar signs so it was like my very 5d <laughs> like truth and then it was like my 3D being like, but what else? What about the money? <laughs> <laughs> you were in my dream. It was like, but what about the money? <laughs> and you're like, and I see dollar signs. Because like, why would you say that? Like, <laughs> that is so funny. It was beautiful, though. It was cool. Oh, it was yeah. been recently, lately in my dreams, I've been visiting a lot of healers, which has been really mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. It's been like the best. Um, there's something I wanted to ask about. So what's the difference in predestiny when we talk about predestiny and then we also talk about like with quantum physics everything being malleable mm -hmm. what do you think about that relationship yeah that's huge so uh basically the concept between f um free will and and destiny right and so it's really powerful um both co of these concepts are huge and they both simultaneously coexist so once again, I believe that all of us as souls, we set up our contracts for this planet. So if you're supposed to get into a car accident in 24, you're going to get into a car accident in 24. That's that's your contract. And that propels you into a new destiny and a new path. And that helps you learn certain lessons and complete certain karma from the past and what have you. Right. So it's all about completing the past and moving forward into the future. Right. So, yeah. So so I believe that contracts are existing. But simultaneously, I believe that in this moment, especially when we're conscious and not necessarily on autopilot, because we don't really create much when we're on autopilot. Once again, we're just acting and reacting to the world around us. But when we're conscious and we have those moments throughout our day and we're like, yeah, this is what I want. This is where I'm going. It'll happen. You're creating that. Now, the funniest thing, and I, and I learned a really good lesson about this just the other day, just like last week. Um, I know that I have a contract with this huge publishing company, right? And, and I know that one of my goals is to write many books, not just one, but many. Even when I was like 10 years old, I'd be pacing in the backyard with a pen and paper saying, I just have to write. I just have to write. I just don't know what it is. And my mom's like, are you OK? I'm like, yeah, I just I, just, I need to give people something I just don't know and uh and so yeah so I've always known that I've, I've I'm, I'm meant to publish this book with this huge publishing agency can we guess who it is yeah that is, yeah. <laughs> got it <laughs> yeah got him uh anyway and so yeah and so for years now I've always been one degree away from you know I pitched them five of my ideas a couple years ago nothing happened anyway so you know I wrote this book and it was like channeled through me in the end of 2019 and it was like I wrote 40,000 words in four days I'm reading it now it's now taken me like two months to read it I'm like how did I channel this in four <laughs> days? Like, how is this even physically possible? Anyway, and so it's really quite incredible. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, this is my time. Like, I'm going to connect with this publisher. And so I put it out in one of my videos in like February. And I said, I have this book. It's amazing. And if anyone has any publishers that they can recommend or contacts, let me know. 
And so I got a ton of emails, all these different publishers who are spiritual, but none of them piqued my interest. I did never followed through just because I'm like, it's only this yeah. one. And then about a month ago, I get contacted by this woman. She's like, hey, I just watched your video from February. Don't know if you're still looking for a publisher, but I used to produce movies with this guy. And then since the, the woman who used to run it passed away, he's now the CEO. And I could reach out to him. And I'm like, you know the CEO of this huge publisher? All right, let's do it. So she reaches out to him. She gets my book front of the line in front of thousands of other books. I pitch my book to them. I wait. I'm sweating and I'm waiting. And, uh, and then they come back and they said, no, it's just not the right time. And so in my mind, I'm like, this is easy. I'm getting in front of mm -hmm. all these other books. I now have contact with the CEO. I mean, this is meant to be, right? And then it didn't happen. And so I'm like pissed at my guides, right? I'm uh, like, of course. Come on. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> of like, course. What is, what is this? So that right? one didn't work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I asked them, I mean, of course they said, this isn't the right time and it would be too limiting. This is, you need to prove to yourself that you can put this out on your own. It was, it was all Ooh, or nothing for me, maybe. right? So it was like big publisher or self-publishing. Maybe you should self I'm, I'm self doing it. Publish. I'm doing it. Yeah. Wow. And I'm actually planning on um, January 1st, 2021 for anyone who's interested. Perfect. Because people email they're like, I, I've been trying to look for your book, but I can't Aww. find it anywhere. I'm like, it's not out yet, but um, it, it is. So anyway, but the, 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 the lesson that I learned between destiny and contracts, right? Um, or I should say destiny and free will. My free will is powerful, right? And I'm ve a very conscious person most of my day. And I have a very strong ability to manifest. So what I ended up doing was I manifested something like five years before the time that it was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is what I want and I want it right now. And it happened and it happened and it happened and then it just didn't happen because it still wasn't aligned with my contracts. That's why it was easy, easy, easy because it was in alignment with my free will. My free will wanted it to happen. So it was happening, 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 happening. And then right at the very end, it dropped off because my guys are like, come on listen like it was like my ego my human was overriding what i should just have been yeah. relaxed into so the, it's it's still a difficult like i still kind of battle the free will versus the the destiny every day but i learned a huge lesson which is your manifestation abilities can override your contracts to a certain point yeah i think we have a friend mama medicine and she's been talking a lot lately about demanifestation mm -hmm. and how you know because people are so powerful manifestors that there's a lot of times when the manifestation gets caught in the ego, you know, where it is, and not necessarily saying yours is in the ego, but there are parts of it. If it, if you're wanting to do it on your own timeline, that's a little bit more ego than the natural timeline. You know what I mean? And so within manifestation, we oftentimes have to be a little more thoughtful and careful as our human, when we come into our human power and our consciousness to manifest, to understand that there are things outside of us that are like also at play that know best, mm -hmm. you know, like the universe. Yeah, absolutely. So when you, sorry, just last question on the soul contracts. Cause we were having a conversation recently um, and it was around how something we were experiencing was not a part of our soul contract or it was like not oh. necessarily um, oh, that thing. like a tie to something. I'm just trying to be as vague as possible. Wait, anyway, with Kiki. Yeah, with Kiki. Okay. Um. Oh, I get it. It so, wasn't. We didn't. We didn't opt into it. It was done without our consent. Yeah. So I guess I. I, I I'm wondering about that. Where like yeah. there are soul contracts, and then there's like energy or situations that we don't necessarily opt into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this is really interesting. Yes. So I'll just kind of. Uh, yeah, I'll just kind of give it a good example. So the three of us are sitting here, right? And say, for example, both of you are on autopilot. So you're not really in the moment creating your reality. But I'm over here thinking, yeah, I want to like mess with this, you know, or I want to like create something here. Like I can actually, with my power of intention, I can override your contracts by manifesting and creating something just mm. because I'm so intentional and powerful. And unfortunately, this is what tends to happen with some of the lower vibrational beings is they know how intention works. They know how free will works. They know if you're not intentional, you can be manipulated, basically, is what, what, what it comes down to. Yeah. So another person can actually override your contracts or your free will based on their free will. 
Now, I actually teach this a lot to my clients because uh, they they battle with their, you know, unawakened husbands and, you know, and family members. And and, and it's very, very much so a struggle. And I said, if you pop yourself into 5D and you maintain that frequency, you can basically, I don't want to say force others to shift. But I mean, you know, you're pushing that shift. Love that. But what what (laughs) Mm -hmm. we tend to do is we lower our vibration to match those around us because we're empath and we want to give back and we want to make sure that we're all on the same page and we don't stand in our power, right? So I actually teach this level of overriding other people's free will, especially when it's for their best interest, for everyone's best interest. So I always kind of end off every intention with for the highest good of all involved. Love that. Yeah, free will is huge. Yeah. Free will, love the universe. Yeah. Um, and I hope when I said the demanifestation thing, that wasn't like offensive. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. No, I don't get offended. Of course not. <laughs> I anything. just wanted to be sure. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the 3D, 5D thing. And I think, you know, I just want to make it clear for people what exactly what we're talking about with 3D and 5D and why 4D isn't necessarily like included in when we're talking about shifting those timelines. So can you explain like the 3D, 5D concept? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Do we have like five hours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I did you. I was like, I'm going to plug in the battery. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. So third dimension density. So Dimensions in general are just different vibrational frequency densities, right? So um, say, for example, the difference the difference in density between this table and this water, right, on the table. So there's a different density, right? And so you can think about the dimensions as different densities with vibration and energy. That's kind of how I think about them. So the higher the dimension you go, the less dense it is. Therefore, the closer it is to source. Therefore, the less polarized it is um, and, and the less binary it is, right? The more harmonious everything is in that density. So right now, we've been existing on the third dimension density. It's a very dense existence, and overall, what I've been taught uh, from interdimensionals is that there are there are about 12 dimensions in this universe. There's many different universes, but there's two, 12 dimensions in this universe. We're on the third one. So we're kind of like down the totem pole. And uh, and so in this third dimension density, it it's all about linear. It's all about polarity. It's all about have and have not. It's all about past, present, and future. You know, there really isn't a lot of harmony in this third dimension. And and the powers that be want it this way, right? Mm. So that we are stuck in one or another. And uh, and so then the fourth dimension density, right? So you get a little bit closer, you a little bit more up there. Um, and it's a little bit more liminal. Like, I believe that the fourth dimension is where ghosts and spirits exist. Mm. I believe that the fourth dimension is actually where reptilian beings exist in that fourth dimension. So they're kind of here, kind of not here. Um, Some of the laws of physics in the third dimension don't necessarily apply to them in the same ways, right? Everything's a little bit more lucid and liminal. Um, I also believe that the fourth dimension is actually where time itself is contained. So it doesn't mean that any dimension above the fourth dimension, time doesn't exist. It just exists in a different way, right? And so I actually, when I do a lot of astral traveling and remote viewing, I'm always astral traveling in the fourth dimension density, right? In this place where time doesn't really exist and I can go different places. But we also have to be careful because that's where a lot of entities and beings. And unfortunately, when someone raises their vibration from third dimension to fourth dimension through to fifth dimension, getting to fifth dimension, they always have to go through this really like weird kind of dark fourth dimension density where there's things that are lurking, right? And that's where a lot of people get psychically attacked when they're just opening them. So I want to open up my third eye or my wife. I just want to call in some beings. I'm like, what? What do you mean calling Mm -hmm. some beings? Like, are you asking for which ones you're calling in? You know, so a lot of people just don't know. They open themselves up. They don't really have intentions. They just bring whatever comes through in. And uh, and it can be definitely, you know, difficult to, to kind of navigate. And so then the fifth dimension, it's tough because it's a dimension in itself. And we are third dimension beings moving into a fifth dimensional state. So it's kind of tough and difficult to explain the fifth dimension as a as a third dimensional being. You know, there are fifth dimensional beings that are less dense than we are, need less food, basically need less sleep, need less maintenance. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when we move into the fifth dimension density, it's not necessarily like our physical reality changes and it does in a way. It's our perception around it that changes. Right. 
And our perception is everything. Our perception is our reality. So all of a sudden, everything's just a lot more bright and beautiful and harmonious. And we experience a lot less density and limitations and polarity in our lives. But in order to get to the fifth dimension density vibrationally within ourselves, we need to purge out the third dimension. We need to purge out all of our limitations, all of our attachments, all of our labels, anything that is holding us back and holding us into this limitation we need to purge out and let go before we move into fifth. So the fourth isn't really talked about too much because we are in a sense kind of skipping over it. It's kind of a weird you know, place to be in. Um, but it's the fourth is, is an aspect of the third and the fifth, but we're not going to be sitting there. You know, we're going to be sitting in in a higher frequency than that. Um, and the, the coolest thing, too, is I believe that there's a collective reality and I believe that there's an individual reality. And eventually we're all going to be in a fifth dimension collective, which is really amazing. And I think we're going to experience that in our lifetime. But for right now, we're all kind of ascending on our own into our own state of being, into our own fifth dimension frequency. And that also uh, includes the fact that this physical reality gets weird, right? So we're now surpassing both space, which is third dimension, right? Physical space and physical objects. And we're surpassing the concept of time itself. So in fifth dimension density, both space and time get weird, right? So one of the symptoms is time speeds up, time slows down, um, glitches in the matrix, objects duplicating, objects disappearing completely, objects moving, plants in your background, backyard moving different locations. It's like the Mandela effect is just the aspect of hopping in and out of different parallel realities. And when you're in the fifth dimension, you're in a vibrational frequency where it's very easy to hop in and out of different states of being, especially when you're using conscious manifestation. As far as detaching ourselves from identities and um, things in the third dimension, how would you recommend people do that? And part B is like, what does it feel like? I know you talked about ascension symptoms and and we've been experiencing some and and why are we experiencing those symptoms? Like, why exactly is it painful <laughs> instead of help like, me? Yeah, it, help literally me help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and and go back to the first question again. What was that? Yeah. So basically, how would you recommend people detach mm-hmm. from the three D? Yeah, in absolutely. order to get to five D. Yeah. So the first thing is is free yourself of ignorance. Um, mm. within your own limitations. If you're not even aware of your own limitations you're not going to be able to escape them, yeah. right? Straight up. So so understand, you know, your label system. Understand the polarity in your life. Understand your own attachments. And the biggest way to understand disharmony in your life is to look at resistance. Anything in your life, whether it be a conversation, an action, um, you know, a concept that you have resistance to, there's a lesson to learn and there's some sort of attachment that's holding you back. Yeah. Right. So fifth dimension is 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 free of of resistance. And that's where it's like you become totally free and sovereign as a being in the fifth dimension frequency because you're free of that resistance. Right. So deep dive into your resistance and then bring harmony to the resistance. Maybe you need to forgive people of the past. Maybe you need to switch up your reality and choose something different. Maybe you need to love yourself a little bit more or you should love yourself a little bit more because we all do, you know, so being aware, freeing yourself of ignorance, being aware of your own limitations, being aware of the resistance, surrendering to your emotions and that resistance and releasing whatever it is that's still there, that's still nagging at you, you know? So, so, you know, and that's kind of what I teach in my videos as well is how to free yourself of that third dimension. But that's a, that's a practice. That's a lifestyle. That's not just a go home and do this sort of thing. Um, Yeah. And then one more thing about the third dimension is you have to really respect it, right? Because a lot of us as starseed beings, we have so much resistance to the very facet of being a human being that it's very difficult for us to just be here. Um, so, I mean, just the very act of living alone is, you know, encompassing a lot of resistance. So loving your human a lot more and respecting what you can experience in the limitations of this 3D is really important. Um, 
And then your second question again. Oh yeah, the ascension symptoms and why Mm -hmm. we experience them. Yeah, so everyone, like especially people listening to this right now, is going to be experiencing some of these symptoms. It's such a laundry list and it's typically very painful. So you've got metaphysical or energetic and emotional symptoms as well as physical symptoms. Um, The physical symptoms are really interesting. Even last night I was really battling this and it was this extremely sharp pain in my heart you know and and so for me at 28 it's like I can remind myself I'm young I'm healthy I eat properly like it's all good but for someone who's like 68 experiencing these sort of um, physical symptoms like that would be cause for concern um, irregular heart palpitations that's all actually opening up the heart chakra right so other things like um, nausea is very common um, anxiety is very common anxiety is just flipping in and out of different vibrational frequencies nausea is directly related to the solar plexus and stepping into your confidence right bloating indigestion um, you know lower abdominal issues hip issues lower back issues are all related to the sacral chakra emotional So as we deal with each one of these energy centers in the body, there is going to be a subsequent symptom related to it. And most of the symptoms are physical. And the reason why is because we have suppressed so much of our energy and vibration and emotion throughout this lifetime and many, 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 many other lifetimes that it's now just all accumulated and has been sitting in our body. And this is where we see tumors and cysts and cancer cells is when that energy transmutes and transforms into the physical right so the most important thing is just really taking it easy on yourself exhaustion is probably the number one symptom that i find a lot of people have and it's because you're transmuting you're shifting you're understanding the energy within you you're releasing a bunch of energy so when a client of mine says you know i feel so bad because i haven't done anything this month i've been so unproductive and i said You've been doing more than you even realize because your energy has been working and that's why you feel so exhausted. So listen to your body. You know, the number one thing is just listen to your body. Don't freak out. You're not dying. (laughs) All right. Um, Because it will feel that way. And so it really it's just our physical bodies purging out all of the energy that we've been holding in for such a long time. And then that has physical consequences in our life as well as far as your friendships and your family dynamics. I mean, no longer can you hold back on what you've wanted to say for years. You're going to say it. You know, things in your life are going to blow up. Things have to blow up in order to recreate a better dynamic for you, a dynamic that's more in a higher vibration. So friend dynamics, living situation, romantic relationships, job situation are all changing. And I believe that, you know, quarantine and everything that's going on is beautiful because many people are losing their jobs and they now have a blank canvas to recreate their life in a way that is aligned to to their highest vibration. And they were not strong enough to say, no, I'm going to leave my job and find something else. And now they have to be strong enough to do that, you know. And so it's it's quite beautiful it's quite painful and then of course the emotional roller coaster ride as well you know the craziest thing is that you know you'll just be hanging out at home watching netflix and this wave of anger comes over you and you're like why do i feel so angry right now and believe it or not it's actually because you just got triggered in this moment and you your energy went into a past lifetime and now you're purging out a past life Right. For me, I mean, I see it all very visually. If I'm if I stub my toe and I'm purging out a past life where I broke my toe, I can see that, you know, and and I have that explanation. Um, And unfortunately, most people are stuck, you know, in so much reaction of the current moment that they are not allowing themselves to go to those deeper levels and understanding that this is coming from something far deeper than just what you're perceiving it as in this moment. So you're going to come back on when the book's coming out. Yes. <laughs> we'll help you. We'll, we'll be your publishing house. <laughs> we'll help yeah. you. Girl, there you need to self-publish. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, I love that so much. Okay, so where can our community connect with you? Give us all, all the things. Yeah, for sure. So I have a website, just elizabethapril.com. But then you can Google me, Elizabeth April. I'm on all the networks. Um even TikTok, but that's an eye roll, and I really oh don't gosh. post. I know. I oh, I need to see it. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. No. <laughs> I regret even saying it. Um, but yeah, mostly um, Instagram, if you want to kind of follow my daily vibe and like get some motivational kind of writings that I do on there. Um, but mostly right now, it's YouTube. 
I have a YouTube um, membership uh, page as well. So if you kind of want to dive deeper into information, check out the YouTube membership. But other than that, I have hundreds of videos and thousands of hours uh, that's all for free on YouTube that will shift your vibration. So just prepare yourself before yeah. you dive deep. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I and I love getting the messages of like, I just discovered you last night and I binge watched you and I was up until 6 a.m. like just <laughs> watching your content. I'm like, yes, that is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, welcome to 5D, you mm-hmm. know? So anyway, yeah, it was it was such a pleasure being here. And, oh and you God, ladies you. are so, so wonderful Aww. and such a great vibe. We're going to stalk you, so don't worry. <laughs> Honestly, you're not done with us. Sorry. Uh, We're so grateful. And yeah, yeah, and and even this episode, like if some, if people are listening and you found this episode, like I I think it's that same feeling Mm -hmm. of just like, if you're feeling a little like, whew, activated and moved and there's a reason. Yeah. And take the time to integrate as well. Like I say this after my videos, I say it after my sessions and, and after interviews. It's just, if this was a lot and you had no idea of any of this stuff, just take it really easy on yourself and, and be okay with the feelings of being exhausted or having pains or being really hungry or really apathetic or whatever it may be that you're feeling. It's mm. just, it's just all in the realm of activation. Mm. Great. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right, guys. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah.